Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's acrylic painting tutorial is of a loose and abstract landscape by using a limited color palette. We will only be using three main colors with white and black. I'm going to show you how you can still achieve a beautiful painting with not so many paints at all. So let's dive right in. Also before we start, I just wanted to mention uh, that the giveaway of the month will be an 8x8 inch art print of this acrylic floral painting. To enter, all you have to do is join my private Facebook group and like the post there so that I know that you want in. It is open worldwide and the winner will be announced next Wednesday, August 19th. Again, the link to my Facebook group will be in the description below. I will also be listing all the names of the paints that I use, including the brushes and the sizes in the description, so make sure you check that out. We will be creating four sections here, and the first column will be the color straight out of the tube, and then we will mix that with white and then black. And the last column, I will just be mixing all these three main colors with each other to see what we can get. So as you can see, white alone can bring you so many different tints, which can be really great in adding low lights or highlights. Similarly, adding black to a color can bring you various tones, which can be great to give your painting your dark tones. And then combining the white column variations that we made, um, or even the, the, the plain color white out of the tube will give you a range of midtones. So basically to create dimension to any form or subject matter that you paint, you need your dark tones, your midtones, your low lights and highlights. Now as long as you understand this concept, you can give your painting some, um, some depth as opposed to making things look flat. So as you can see over here, adding some white with the green and black will give you a beautiful mint shade that can act as your mid-tone in this case. Okay, so now that we added our whites and blacks to these three main colors, let's now experiment with mixing these three main colors with each other. So here I am mixing the yellow ochre with the oxide green to create this lovely light sap green, again which can be super useful when it comes to landscapes. So yeah, I would highly recommend you to experiment and play around with color mixing to understand your paints better. You really do not need that many paints to begin with to make art. Primarily, you only need your primary colors really to, you can, you can just with your primary colors that you have, you can make the entire, um, the entire color wheel. So I think I can also make another video just based on that if you're interested. So let me know in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, once you get the hang of this, you know, it really will become second nature to you. If you lack a clear direction of the way you want your painting to lead before you actually start, I would highly suggest you to make a little sketch study. Um, this can really be a good starting point. So as you can see, my final painting is not that different from what I initially um, tried to just sketch out very, very loosely. So yeah, try that out. It just may help you. Okay, so I'm going to begin my very first layer with a thin light wash of the yellow ochre. I'm actually going to have that yellow ochre peek through a little bit uh, throughout my painting which adds a really nice little depth to the entire painting. Alright then using that same brush I'm going to take some of that black and draw out my horizon line 
and then we will take that blue I think it's um, this one's the cobalt blue I will take that blue and start at the very top and um, gradually add in some white as we move towards the horizon line I will also leave some of the yellow ochre uh, at the very base of the horizon line so um, just to kind of give it like a sunset effect also if you paint along with me and you want to share this with me and others the link to my private Facebook group is linked in the description down below so you can check that out Next up, I am going to be blocking in um, all the shapes in the field area. So I broke them up into three different shapes to keep it simple and kept the color the lightest at the back and then I darkened it at the foreground. So yeah, just block in those shapes and then we will add in the details as we move along. start blocking in the shapes that you want as your trees and your bushes we still want to keep this entire painting loose and abstract so we won't be adding in too many details just enough to add depth and dimension to your painting Using the exercise of color mixing we did in the very beginning, we do know that we can get so many different colors and variations. So I am just mixing things around here and there and adding tiny strokes to places where I think it'll look good to give it the impression of maybe, you know, rocks or even animal. When it comes to loose or impressionist style paintings, you just want to give an impression of things, right? That's why it's called loose. You don't want to actually draw out details of what you're, you're painting, but people will get the sense of, you know, just far away objects. And that is what y your goal as an artist is when you paint loose. So play around with different brush strokes to get that loose style. So for tiny brush strokes, you know, use a smaller brush. It can be definitely easier and switch up your, your brush marks to make it look, um, to make it look nice. Mm -hmm. 
Let's take a break from the landscape in the front and jump over to the sky. I wanted to get some dramatic clouds going on here. Now if you are completely a beginner and you can very well leave the sky as is, your painting will still end up looking beautiful. But if you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, then feel free to follow along with this cloud section. Now I have explained in depth on how to paint clouds in a previous video which I will link right here and also in the description if you want to go check out. I won't really be going over too much techniques for this since I've mentioned this before. Um, so you can just click right here. But in short, to make these clouds, I am going to lay out some dark tones, mid tones, low lights and highlights to form the shape. So I'm adding in some really nice and bold strokes and some little ones uh, right towards the horizon to give that a more distance, um, a distance cloud look. Coming to the foreground again, I am just giving it some last minute details to finish off this piece. Again, it is totally up to you on how much information you want to provide. So just adding in a few little strokes in different tones and variations will, will do the trick. we go we're all done i really hope you guys enjoyed and learned some basics when it comes to painting a simple loose landscape if you would like to share this with me the link to my private facebook group is linked in the description down below and if you are interested in entering the giveaway of this month which is this 8x8 floral art print you will need to join my facebook group and like the post there so that i know that you want in also, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for weekly art videos. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll catch you next week. Bye guys.